Do you often feel exhausted, irritable or foggy? These could be signs of poor mitochondrial function. Our mitochondria are responsible for producing energy which all of the cells inside our body need to work. So if you have poor mitochondria function, not only would you be feeling sluggish, you're also more at risk of chronic diseases like diabetes. Hi, I'm Fenella Scutt, a graduate from a Masters of Science at Stanford University, where I also played high-level varsity sports. I set out on a goal to work on my mitochondrial health because as a science nerd and competitive athlete, it was essential for my mental focus in the lab and for my performance on the hockey field after classes. I started using Lumox red light therapy as a tool to support healthy muscles and joints in sports and have since progressed to use it all over my body, supporting my mood and energy levels, blood sugar, and even for healing cuts, bruises, bug bites, and getting rid of those pesky pimples that show up from time to time. This is an important video because I'm going to uncover the five things that are damaging your mitochondria every day. Also, we'll be releasing a part two to this video with our top four simple steps to address mitochondrial dysfunction. So make sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified for that. Whether you're giving a crucial presentation at work, running a 5K, attending a social event, teaching a class, or studying for an important exam, these are all moments when we need optimum energy. However, Feeling switched on, energized and focused doesn't come easy for anyone nowadays and I'm going to tell you why. Despite their small size, mitochondria power almost every cellular process in our body, producing the energy needed for essential processes that happen behind the scenes. You might remember the mitochondria being called the powerhouses of the cells in science class and this is because they convert the food we eat into the energy our bodies rely on and this energy is known as ATP. The mitochondria fuel essential processes like burning fat, building muscle, digesting food, or repairing tissues. But when external factors damage our mitochondria, they won't function optimally and we can't perform at our best. So what's damaging our mitochondria and preventing them from working at 100%? First on the list is ultra processed food, or more generally, poor diet. You wouldn't put the wrong gas in your car because it'll damage the engine and eventually stop working. The same happens in our body. Overeating, excessive sugar intake, and consuming ultra processed food can really hurt our engines, the mitochondria. I'm glad that everyone is finally talking about the toll the ultra processed processed food and the billion dollar processed food industry is taking on our health. The highly refined sugars and addictive chemicals being added to our food are a major cause of inflammation, which seriously impacts mitochondria function. So after repeatedly fueling our body with the wrong type of gas, this is why we start to see chronic diseases popping up, like diabetes and high blood pressure. It doesn't stop there though. In an editorial by Dr. Pizzorno, he included this graph which based on published studies shows how mitochondria dysfunction could also be underlying common problems like graying of hair, wrinkles, alopecia, muscle weakness, and declining eyesight. Sounds a bit like aging, right? Well, you're not wrong because a lot of these things are commonly attributed to aging. But if you really dig down, the reason might be declining mitochondrial function. Mitochondria typically decline in function as we age. The number and function of the mitochondria actually start to decrease by a huge 8% per decade. And the more we allow external factors to damage our mitochondria, the quicker we show these outward aging signs. You might be thinking that age is inevitable, which is true, we are all getting older, but there might be some things you can do to slow this degradation, to stay feeling and looking young. This will all be explained in part two of the mitochondria series that I've linked for you at the end of this video. Number three comes down to our lifestyle choices. The things we know are bad for us, like smoking and alcohol, obviously take a toll on mitochondrial health, but also high stress levels, lack of sleep, like if you're constantly getting less than seven hours each night over the course of a week and sedentary lifestyle, you know, sitting at your work desk all day, all contribute to mitochondrial damage. Our mitochondria need proper stimuli to keep them active and functioning efficiently. Without this, they don't get the boost they need and inflammation tends to stick around a lot longer in our bodies. And usually, if we're sitting all day and not exercising, we're probably not getting enough light either. We're all spending way too much time indoors, which often leads to a deficiency in vitamin D. And vitamin D is a crucial nutrient for energy production because it provides fuel for the mitochondria. Then on top of this, we're getting flooded by artificial and blue light from our devices. Think back to the early days of humanity, pre-technology, morning sunlight to wake us up, lots of daylight throughout our waking hours, and the dim light of an amber fire in the evening. We're literally living the opposite schedule nowadays. So no wonder we're struggling with hormonal balance, restful sleep, energy mood, gut health, you name it. A fourth factor damaging your mitochondria is exposure to environmental toxins. You're probably wondering what this looks like. Well, it's the pesticides on our fruit and veggies, the chemicals in our plastics and personal products, or heavy metals that are found in things like fish, chocolate, and even rice. I'm not saying stop eating these foods, 
but toxins in our environment are unavoidable these days. It's known that more than 80,000 synthetic chemicals are found across our food, water, air, and in our personal care and cleaning products, all of which cause inflammation and stress in the body. And this can disrupt how the mitochondria produce energy. And then lastly, this one is quite surprising and you probably don't know about it. We all have a thermostat in our houses, keeping us at a perfectly comfortable temperature day and night. While it might feel nice, this lack of exposure to temperature variation doesn't set your mitochondria up for peak performance. Mitochondria are stimulated to produce heat when we're cold and cool us down when we're hot. But with modern conveniences, we rarely experience these natural mini temperature stresses that could encourage our mitochondria to work more efficiently. So I just gave you a lot of information about what might be harming your mitochondria. If you're feeling low on energy, unfocused, unmotivated, constipated, struggling with breakouts, or frequently getting sick, these could all be signs of poor mitochondrial health. What's crazy is that scientists are uncovering the root causes behind the most common and even the most unusual diseases, and almost always mitochondrial dysfunction is involved. The good news is, in our next video, I share the four things you need to start doing to help your mitochondria thrive. But listen up, because I'll let you in on a little secret. One of my favorite tools to support my mitochondrial health is red light therapy. Using specific wavelengths, red light therapy directly targets the mitochondria, nudging them to work more efficiently. It's an excellent way to support overall body health, and it's never too late to start. But trust me, the sooner the better. To learn more about why this works, stay tuned for part two of the mitochondria series. If you subscribe to our channel and turn on those post notifications, you'll be the first to know. Give us a like if you found this video helpful and if you know someone who sounds like they've been struggling with something we've talked about today, share this video with them to give them a bit of extra support.